All right, so this is going to be the next in our series of dealing with the Kestrel. Um, this is one of the options you have with the Kestrel is to log all of your data. There are several ways that you can do it, all depending upon which Kestrel you have. We've got the 5500 out there for you for the Academy, and so this will be able to help you get your data off the unit and then onto your computer so that you can do what you would like. So um, this is from the manual that you get, and um, it's a lot of text, so forgive me for that. Let me go on my little pointer. So if you're going to get your data from the, a data port, so I'll start with that one first. This is where you actually plug the Kestrel in, and then you can transfer it over to your personal computer, laptop, or whatever. Um, there is a uh, kestrelinstruments.com. Uh, there's a little question thing that you can do there. Uh, to download uh, software um, and basically you're going to be finding a Kestrel program that will be able to locate your device and then download it. You'll do the same thing for the Bluetooth and for the data port. So when you download this, this is called Kestrel Link, so Kestrel Link for Windows. Um, I don't know if it's got Apple, it probably does. Um, should work exactly the same general idea. So you go through the normal download process uh, to put this on whatever device you're going to do it. Right here, it's located there, unless they change the graphic user interface at some point. Uh, once you get to that website, you'll be able to uh, start the process. Now that you're downloading that, you can hook up your, uh, your Kestrel device. So we've got a couple here. So if you've got a Kestrel with a cord, the cord plugs into the back of it. There's only one way it can plug in. And then it's got a standard thumb drive connection here. I've got this plugged into my laptop. Uh, there's two different types of symbols that you look down at the bottom corner of your Kestrel. This one with uh, two arrows next to each other. This means that it uses a data cable uh, to download your information. If it has a link on it, it can use either the data cable or Bluetooth. So if you've got Bluetooth on your computer or even sometimes you can transfer it to your phone. It's a small file and then transfer it over if you need to. So to know which one you're going to do, Bluetooth has link on it. The one that requires the cable has that little symbol on it. They're just coincidentally green and yellow here. Uh, look for the symbol, that's what tells you. Once you get the uh, your data port on, so you basically are gonna go to your menu and you're gonna scroll through down till you, you get to your settings um, and then you'll notice that there's data port. So you want your data port to be on um, so that you can uh, start downloading the data um, you can go to your options. I, I recommend setting it to a 30 minute because we're going to be doing a 24 hour sequence if you're working with your Kestrel. You could shorten that as you need. It really depends on what you're going to do. But obviously you start filling up your data if it's taking one every second, you know, for example, or every 30 minutes. I think it defaults to one hour and that's usually really too slow for what we're trying to do. Uh, 30 minutes is about right. 15 might even be better. Um, so it's you know, sometimes better to have more data than not. Uh, the date is stored by your date and time, so you want to make sure that you have inputted your date and time on your Kestrel like we did on the earlier ones. Uh, but again, get familiar with what this is and you can scroll down. If you get down to the very bottom of this, if you keep pushing the down button, you'll get to a clear data. And so you can actually refresh your Kestrel unit so that you can not have extra uh, data in there. If you're recording data at any point in time you want, if you push the little red dash at the top of your Kestrel, it will store the data at that moment, regardless of how often it's data, it's recording data. If you write that time down in your notes, you'll be able to pull all of the information off there and it'll record everything that it knows at that time from you know the wind speed, temperature, relative humidity, all that sort of fun stuff. Uh, again, it will be stored by both date and the time. So when you do actually get your Kestrel link set up, um, you're either going to plug it in. This one's actually using the cable. So you're going to plug in the cable and it's going to start scanning for the device. You can restart scan it anytime. You just click restart and it will try to find your device. So it's got a serial number on there to make it unique in case you have several Kestrels that you're using. Um, you can rename it, etc., etc. But whenever it pops up here in the window, you're going to click on that window there, which is going to give you this pop up. This pop-up gives you a couple examples. First off, it tells you the information there. You can rename this device if you want, and it will remember. Basically, it will find this number and then know in the software that you call it something else, and then you can call it something else. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to click this Download Data button, 
when you click the download uh, data button there, it'll populate uh, information over here in the next window there. So you have to uh, tell it that you want new data, otherwise it's not going to give it to you. So when you click on that, it's going to pull up whatever you've got. And so it's got your start time and your end time. So you know if you've got your date and time set up. If this is actually proper data, it has how many data points that are in there. I set one really quick just so that I can have a lot of data points. Um, and so here's my weather device and there's my data. If I, I click on that, I can actually then download your data. These are really small buttons down here, um, but you can delete it or you can export the data. Um, they look a little bit small down there, but trust me, that's where they are. If you're going to do Bluetooth, you're going to do the same thing, but you're going to have instead of data port, you're going to have another option that's called Bluetooth. You'll notice that I just showed you here that you can either turn, if you turn Bluetooth off your data port, what we call it, turn on. If you turn your Bluetooth on, your data port will turn off. So you have to, you can only have one of them on, you can have them both off, but you can only have one on at a time. So if you're using a link system and you want to use the data port, you have to tell it you want the data port. Otherwise, it's going to try to send everything by uh, Bluetooth. So it's going to work the same way as uh, process as before. Uh, so it should be relatively easy. Remember, uh, the, if it has link on it, that means it's going to handle a Bluetooth. It's going to be able to send your data out. Once you get those data, it's going to be a CSV file, which is a comments, comma separated value file. Uh, any program can open this up, and so I just open it up in Excel. If you don't have Excel, you can use Open Office. There's all sorts. There's a lot of different things. Any spreadsheet should be able to handle a CSV file. I recommend that you then save it immediately into the format of whatever you open it in. If you open it in Excel, save it as an Excel spreadsheet. All of your data located here, you have header information up over here. And so what you would do is you would just simply select uh, the highlight all of the data that you have there. If you're using multiple units, then you would match the times up so that you have it all recorded at the right times so that you can then compare and make a graph to it. So you're not going to need everything in here. So you're not going to need like wind chill or whatever that's in here that's being calculated. You may just need the temperature. You may just need those little very simple things um, to collect your data. So get your raw data, then you can build your spreadsheet from there. So basically how this works, um, not really a lot of ways you can go wrong it's, except for not clicking, clicking the right button. So how it works is that the Kestrel has an internal clock that you set up. It will periodically store data if you turn the machine on and then you let it go to sleep, uh, meaning that you haven't turned the device off. It will wake up whenever that time allotment comes in. It won't turn the screen on because it's saving battery, but it technically the device wakes up, say, at 30 minutes records the data of the temperature and everything that's happening to it at that moment in time, goes back to dormant, wakes back up 30 minutes, does the same thing. So if you've got this in an outside area that's going to be recording data or in your office or in, a, in the bird box or whatever you're going to do, it will record every 30 minutes. It's pretty straightforward. The file is then saved as a really simple ASCII file, which means it's just numbers and data separated by commas. So it's got a category. It's just Typing out those data every time it wakes up, takes the reading, dumps all the information it can. Um, so you can connect it then through either a, da a data cable or through uh, Bluetooth, and then you can bring all your information over there. And from there, you'll be able to start playing around with your data. Now, we may have another option for data logging for you, but this is how you do it with the Kestrel, and then I'll get back to you about that later.